A military veteran turned author keeps readers on the edge of their seats with thriller after thriller and his latest novel hit shelves this week. That's right, and Mid-South native and fellow author who really needs no introduction to Live at Nine viewers, former Special Forces Officer Brad Taylor and the man behind the gray man, Mark Graney, want you to share an evening with them right here in Memphis. But first, they're both live with us. Gentlemen, thank you for being uh, with us this morning. Um, okay, so Brad, before we completely give it away and set the scene, um, <laughs> this is actually set in the pandemic. Before you give me the scoop on the book, I want to ask you, what was it like writing in the midst of a global pandemic? Actually, it was uh, pretty rough. <laughs> I'll say that uh, actually Mark and I have talked about, you know, do you put the pandemic in? I wrote American Trader last, uh, the last book I wrote. Uh, I went to Taiwan, I went to uh, Australia, did the book research, and then I got locked in on the pandemic. And I'm like, well, how's this gonna factor in? Because, you know, I, there was a thousand people in the Shinlin night market, now there's none. Uh, Pice doing a surveillance operation in Sydney Harbor, now it's just gonna be him and the one guy. Moving. <laughs> it's all locked in. And nobody can fly or anything like that. And so I, at that time I was like, what am I gonna do with this? So I said it right at 2020, January 2020, when the Taiwanese elections were going on, uh, which is what the book was about anyway. Well, then for this one, I mean, I couldn't even travel to book research. I couldn't go anywhere. I got locked in my house and uh, I had to make a decision. Do you, you know, are you going to write about the pandemic? Are you going to just ignore it? And uh, the two thoughts in my head were, you know, if you write about it and then where we are right now, there is no pandemic. Nobody wants to read about a pandemic at that point. Uh, on the other hand, I looked at the data and everything else, and I said, I don't think this thing's going away. Uh, and it does factor into the book. It's not a you know, big player of the book, but it does factor in. And in some ways, it's good. I, if you look at facial recognition software, if you're going to do an operation overseas and you don't want to get caught, well, you put on some sunglasses, a hat, and you're wearing a mask like a bank robber, and everybody else is wearing that same mask. <laughs> That's a it very, actually helps out the book. That's a great point. That, that is an excellent point there, and a very creative way of doing it, to say the least. We well, well, definitely want to bring uh, Mark in as well. Mark, how did you and uh, Brad kind of team up on this book appearance project? Well, Brad and I have been friends uh, since his first book came out, which I think was about a year after mine came out, so over 10 years now. And we just see each other at, at various author events, and then we just became buddies. And he, uh, very, he and his wife very uh, nicely came in town for my wedding. And um, we've done a few uh, book signings together. And so uh, Novel Bookstore here in Memphis is such a great venue, and uh, I, was, I was happy to, to get to host him. I actually asked him, I, you know, we were talking about where <laughs> well, we go, and I shot him a note and said, hey, I'm coming into Memphis, I think, if they'll do it, would you be willing to interview me? And he, of course, said, yeah, he's a great guy. And this is going to be the first uh, event like this at Novel in, in a really long time. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what it's like been like in other places being on the road and getting out and being able to see your fans and that sort of thing, but I, I imagine that's going to be a special time. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's trying all the way around. In fact, Novel Bookstore, we were actually going back and forth, you know, do you want to do it or not? I'm, I'm willing to do it. I'm, you know, double vax and boosted and I'm going to wear a mask and all that. You know, it's, uh, I, I'm good to do it, but I understand where the bookstore is coming from and they uh, decided, okay, we're going to go ahead and do it. And Mark said, yeah, I'm still good with it. So we're coming. So, so Brad, uh, the topics, the themes, uh, just the different things you write about, have they become a little bit easier uh, these days with so much going on, or is it a little bit more challenging for you? Uh, actually, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a steady eddy thing. Um, you know, a lot of times people say, and you know, oh, you predicted the future, but really what's happening is that uh, I just keep abreast of, of current events around the world, just like Mark does, and there's, uh, a lot of stuff that doesn't make the news in the United States. And so when I uh, write a book, I, I see a threat vector and I'm like, okay, that's what I'm gonna write about. So this specific book, I actually came back from uh, doing research for Ring of Fire. I came out of Morocco and my wife, because she's my wife, planned a two day layover in Rome before we flew <laughs> home. <laughs> so we were doing the great American first thing. We were doing a segue tour, just running around Rome. 
And this car came by with diplomatic license plates, and uh, the my tour guide said, "That's a Knight of Malta car," which I'd never heard of. And I was wow. like, "What? What's wow. Knight of Malta?" And so he gave me a class on the Knights of Malta. They've been there. They've been around since the first crusade. They started out as a hospital thing, then morphed into a, like a Knights Templar army, then went to a naval force. They're actually credited with stopping the Ottoman Empire from invading Europe. Uh, and they have, uh, uh, by international law, they're a sovereign country. They make their own passports, their own currency, their own postage. They have a seat at the UN, diplomatic relationships with a plethora of different countries. But they own no terrain whatsoever. And it was just a fascinating organization. And I said way back then, sooner or later, I'm going to put them in a book. And then when I got locked in with COVID, I was like, later's now become sooner. <laughs> <There you laughs> go. Mark, we got to wrap. So in less than 10 seconds, we can't let you go without asking, what is the latest on the film adaptation of your series? Uh, yeah, the first book of this series is called uh, The Gray Man, and it comes out uh, they're saying the film comes out on Netflix probably in June or July, so it'll be out in just a few months. Oh, wow. Coming soon. I mean, so you yeah. heard it first yeah. right here. Yeah, that's it. Mark, very quickly, <laughs> any names you want to drop? Any stars? Uh, yeah, the hero is named Court Gentry, and he's played by Ryan Gosling, and the main villain is played by Chris Evans and also Billy Bob Thornton. There's a really nice cast. Oh, big time. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, we have two stars right here. Brad Taylor, thank you very much. Mark Granny, good to see you, my friend. Congratulations Thanks, on you both. We'll see you here thank in you. Memphis in just a couple of days. That's right. Thank you. Thanks, thank Ryan. you, guys.